Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and welcome to my second assault guide for Battlefield 4, where I'll be covering the five new weapons of the expansion pack, including the F2000, AS Val, M60E4, Dow 12, and Gold Magnum. Now, before we get into anything else, I would like to let you know that over the next few weeks, starting tomorrow when Second Assault comes out, I'll be hosting at least two 24-7, 64-player Metro Rush servers, because apparently my brain can handle that much mini screen shake. Another 64 player conquest large server with a variety of different maps, a 40 player rush server and a 24 player domination server all running second assault. So if you want to join in on some sandstorm slash metro screen shake lens flare explosion frag rounds fun, I will leave links down to those specific servers in the description. Now that might change a little bit but as it stands right now I will leave links in the description. So let's begin, now that we have all of this sort of managerial slash boring stuff out of the way, with my new favorite assault rifle, which happens to be the F-2000. The F-2000 is unlocked via the Express Train Assignment, which requires you to get one assault rifle ribbon, two kill assist ribbons, and ten kills on Operation Metro, because who doesn't love Metro? The weapon has a max damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 18, firing at a rate of 850 rounds per minute, having a tactical reload of 2.7 seconds and an empty reload of 3.9 seconds, holding a max capacity of 31 rounds. And the first thing I have to say is, in before everyone and their mother starts using slash complaining about this weapon. Not only is it extremely effective, but it's also versatile. The best way that I can describe it is like this. Okay. Picture the AEK, but a bullpup, and significantly better over range. Now granted, it kills and reloads slightly slower than the AK, but other than that, the F2000 is godlike. It's extremely effective, like, not only does it just outright win the majority of gunfights that it enters into at close range due to just great hipfire characteristics because it's a bullpup, it can also become a laser beam at medium range, especially when you slap a compensator on it. And even though it has some horizontal recoil, it's easily controllable once you use the weapons for, I don't know, even a few rounds, you get used to it really quickly. And really, the, the alpha reload time is the only real major downside. I mean, I guess you could say the recoil is a major downside, but the only real major downside, in my opinion, is the reload time. But even so, it doesn't drastically affect the weapon in a massively negative way. So, it's no big deal. Lisa my Ryan, just find a comfy corner and you'll be fine if you reload in the right location. Now, I realize that most of you are going to want to use the goofy looking sight on the top that looks like a jet ski. I mean, just look at it. How, how does that not, I mean, you obviously see the resemblance to a jet ski, but anyways, I personally don't recommend it due to the peripheral view obstruction that you get with it. I mean, I'm sure many of you are gonna want to use it out because my newness, my premium, but just look what happened to me, alright? Here's my scope and here's my score while I was using the jet ski, alright? Now here's my scope and here's my score once I changed up to the red dot, like... I think you can see the obvious difference here. I'm not necessarily implying that you'll bust out a mad kill streak once you switch sites, but I personally recommend running the non-jet ski site. Like anything but the jet ski site because it's so obstructive of your peripheral vision, just in general. But hey, if you insist, if you want to yell at me, hey, shove it, Badger, you don't run my life, YOLO, just by all means, if you want to do it that way, YORO, okay. I recommend also slapping a laser sight for better hip fire, a compensator due to the horizontal recoil, and an ergo slash vertical grip for better spread while firing on the move. And you know what? Just use it. You'll get exactly what I mean when I say this jet ski gun is terrifying. It is so good. The next weapon we have is the AS Val. The AS Val is unlocked via the assignment Co-Pilot, and all you really need to do for this one is spend 10 minutes in helicopters, but it's a bug right now, so for some reason transport helis don't really count towards it, so you need to spend 10 minutes in either a scout or attack helicopter, and get 10 squad repairs, which is actually extremely easy. It might sound a little daunting, it's not at all, it's extremely easy. The weapon has a max damage of 30 and a minimum damage of 17, firing at a rate of 900 rounds per minute, having a tactical reload time of 1.95 seconds and an empty reload time of 2.9 seconds, holding a max capacity of 21 rounds. And the first thing that you should know is that this weapon has the highest damage per second output in the game. Now granted there's some exceptions like, you know, insta-kill sniper rifles and shotguns and so forth, but other than that, 
it is outrageously deadly. Like, it shines in situations where you just need to tear an enemy in half at close quarters, basically. It's especially good for taking down a few enemies, quickly reloading, rinsing, and repeating. But tactical reload time is not necessarily the best among all the engineer class, but it's among the fastest. A key feature is that it has a built-in suppressor, which means that you will not be showing up on the minimap when you fire it, which is pretty nifty. Just make sure that you stay away from your teammates that are probably just firing and belt feeding and opening up with an LMG right beside you, sort of just ruining your built-in suppressor. But just don't choose Trevor as a teammate. But beyond the ASVAL's ability to cut people in half like a chainsaw, there are certainly some downsides. Number one, the recoil is not ideal. It tends to really bounce around, so kills at range don't come easily, although you can do it. And this is even harder given the total capacity of 21 rounds, which runs out extremely quickly. I mean, just think about it, man. 900 rounds per minute with a 21 round capacity, you're going to be reloading as if you're using a FAMAS, but not quite. But still keep in mind that this weapon does possess a great tactical reload time that I mentioned previously. In my opinion, this weapon is best suited not only for close range engagements, but also situations regarding small groups of enemies. So you'll find oftentimes your magazine size is... I'm stretching this here, but it's enough to take down one to two, possibly three enemies if you're that accurate with a single magazine. But all too often, you're just going to find yourself saying, God, I wish I had more bullets, man. I need more bullets. I need more bullets, all right? Also keep in mind the weapon is absolutely chewing. It chews on your ammo, right? Chews through ammo, not only because of your number of magazines with a small magazine count, but just purely the rate of fire. So sticking close to a support player is probably a good idea, even though the supports that I usually play with basically never give out, give out ammo. I mean, I play this class for the LMG not to give out ammo. But for attachments, I recommend maximum spread reduction through the laser sight and potato slash stubby grip. But also keep in mind that I primarily use these attachments while running around violently, so you may choose alternatives if you want to squeeze some more range out of it. The next weapon on the expansion pack list is the M60E4, and it's about to get real Rambo up in here. The M60E4 is unlocked via the Dust Devil assignment, which requires you to get one anti-vehicle ribbon and destroy five vehicles on Gulf of Oman. The weapon has a max damage of 34 and a minimum damage of 25, firing at a rate of 570 rounds per minute, having a tactical reload time of 7.8 seconds and an empty reload time of 7.8 seconds, obviously being the same, holding a max capacity of 100 rounds. Now first off, I tried hip firing this thing like Rambo with mixed results, so I can easily endorse that using it that way is probably not the most effective thing in the world, but feel free to try it yourself. What makes this weapon so special is it has a different damage model compared to the majority of other support weapons as in a max and minimum damage of 34 and 25 respectively instead of the most common which is obviously 25 and 18 as a maximum and minimum damage among most of the other LMGs. And this has a few different implications. So number one, you'll notice that this thing is outrageous effective at range. So it is going to surprise you too. Like I, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I just found myself saying he's dead already? Like I just started firing. How is he already dead? However, the damage model that makes this thing so dandy because it has so much damage per shot also does come with some negative traits. So number one, it has the lowest rate of fire among all the support weapons. I mean, the higher damage can make up for this in close range, so keep in mind, if you miss your first shot or two, you're probably boned when facing the majority of other weapons in the game. Number two, the reload time is slowest among all the support weapons at 7.8 seconds. Now, I can't exactly say that you can go, like, microwave a pizza or, like, some kind of bagel bite tray in the time that it takes you to reload, but it's, it's almost that long. Not only is it... Sort of, I mean, I guess it's expected because it's an LMG, inherently, you're going to have a long reload time because you're reloading a box instead of a magazine, but it's noticeably longer than L other LMGs. Like, I think that's definitely noteworthy. Number three, it has the harshest vertical recoil of all the support weapons as well. Not only is that an issue if you fire in... I want to say like three to four bursts, you'll really, really notice it. But if you stick to one to two short, like just very, very quick little bursts, it's certainly, it, you can definitely mitigate it if you keep it to one to two shots consistently, especially when you use a heavy barrel to minimize your shred. It can still be fine. You can still mitigate that recoil if you use it correctly. And finally, the hip fire is terrible. And I know you're scoffing and saying, 
Oh, dude, it's an LMG, but it, it's designed to have bad hipfire, right? But it has the second worst hipfire characteristics of all the LMGs. Only the PKP is worse. So I hate to burst your bubble, but it seems like DICE is on a mission to discourage you from using the weapon like you are Rambo. So I don't know what to say about that. For attachments, I recommend maximizing your range ability with the heavy barrel. Yet again, be sure to stick to one to two round bursts. The angled slash folding grip for less first shot recoil or a bot. I mean, I got, a bipod can obviously work, but I don't know how much of you drink that much camp sauce or like to sit in like balconies or things of that sort. I'm not sure how inclined you are to that sort of behavior. And of course, the laser sight. So, R.I.P. and Peaches Rambo. I'm really sorry that the hip fire doesn't really work out in this game. Just sorry, bro. The next weapon we have is the new favorite of mine in terms of the shotgun class, the Dow 12. The Dow 12 is unlocked via the Dead Stop assignment, and all you need to do for this one is get one shotgun ribbon and raise or lower the Caspian Border Gate. It seems simple enough to me. Now for the shotguns in general, it would blow your mind all the different variables and influences that change how much damage the weapon does depending on the ammunition. So I'm going to condense it and showcase the characteristics with Buckshot and Flechette being the most common because I don't want to make this video two hours long. With Buckshot, the weapon has a max damage of 18 and a minimum damage of 6 with a pellet count of 9, firing at a rate of 220 rounds per minute, having a tactical reload time of 1.18 seconds and an empty reload time of the same 1.18 seconds, holding a max capacity of 12 rounds or 12 shells, if you will. The only change when using Flechette is that the pellet count is up to 12, yet the damage is dropped down to a maximum of 12.5 and a minimum of 8.4. So, beyond all those numbers that I just told you, I'll just tell you in outright plain English, this thing is outrageously effective. First reason why is the rate of fire. It has the second highest rate of fire of all the shotguns, only the QBS-09 fires faster, but that thing really doesn't measure up to the Dow because it only has 6 rounds while a Dow has 12. So essentially, it has the same characteristics that many of the other semi-auto shotguns have that make them so good, while also having a large capacity of 12 rounds and the ability just to spam this thing extremely fast. So if you want to absolutely stomp a server or just cheese the crust out of your enemy, accept no substitutes, at least in my opinion. I can easily state right now that this is my go-to shotgun for domination. I would pick this thing over any other shoddy in a heartbeat. This is mainly because the defensive spec makes a lot of the pump shotties really weak, at least lately. I mean, it's designed to one-shot you, and when it doesn't one-shot you because everybody's running a defensive spec, it kind of defeats the purpose, and why not just use the Dow and I can just spam this all day? Just spam, spam, spam. But there's one major downside to the Dow. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but just take a look at this right here. I'm not sure if I'm reloading a deadly shotgun or winding a clock, but it takes forever. It's so slow that some of the other shotguns, such as the M1014, can reload two shells before the Dow reloads one shell. It's just the only real major downside. But if you find a comfy corner, you will be fine. And the 12 shell capacity also means that you won't be reloading every two seconds, but I like to constantly be reloading on the move. I know it looks a little goofy to be constantly doing that, but it certainly works for me. You can quickly just cancel the reload and start shooting again. It doesn't take very long. And in terms of Buckshot versus Flechette, theoretically, if you hit all of your burst as in every single pellet, Buckshot does slightly more damage, but I had success with both. I mean, there's a little few... I don't even know how I describe it specifically. They're both very effective, but there's a few little things that I like about Buckshot a little bit more. Because of the obvious short range orientation, I personally suggest Buckshot due to the overall greater damage potential, but it's not like Flechette was necessarily bad. For attachments, I also recommend the Laser Sight for tighter spread, the Modified Choke, and the Ergo slash Vertical Grip for obvious advantages while firing on the move. I mean, it's a shotgun though. You can try it with a variety of different attachments and still excel. The final weapon of the new expansion is the Goal Sniper Magnum. The Gold Sniper Magnum is unlocked via the Eagle's Nest assignment, which requires you to get one sniper rifle ribbon and in a single round kill five players from the Caspian or Firestorm Towers. I don't know who came up with this camp sauce assignment, but it's not very difficult. 
The weapon has a max damage of 100 and a minimum damage of 59, firing at a rate of 63 rounds per minute, having a tactical reload time of 3.3 seconds and an empty reload time of 4.1 seconds, holding a max capacity of 6 rounds. Now, the rifle will deal a maximum damage of 100 up to 12.5 meters and reaches its minimum damage of 59 at a range of 150 meters, and that's particularly important with the sniper rifles. The standout feature of the weapon is its very high rate of fire compared to the majority of other sniper rifles at 63 rounds per minute. Just looking at the footage, you can see how quickly the bolt cycling animation just goes and goes and goes, which is the major strength of the weapon. That makes it not only great for aggressive recon if you want to go all Sergeant Enigma on the other team, but it's also great for follow-up shots. So let's say you hit some rando in the body, but you don't kill him, you can quickly cycle the bolt and hit him again, or if you miss the first time, you can have a follow-up headshot extremely quickly due to the speed of the round change. Now, although this weapon is comparable to the Scout Elite in the a few different ways, it has a superior damage model that doesn't drop off as sharply, which makes it better at range. However, the major downside of this rifle is the capacity. So many other sniper rifles contain capacities of 11 rounds, which means more bullets on target without reloading as frequently as a major advantage. But also keep in mind that these rifles that have 11 round capacities usually also have damage models that drop off significantly quicker or more sharply than the Gold Magnum, which is the downside. So overall, it's a versatile weapon and extremely effective due to the bolt cycle rate, and I recommend it highly. For attachments, I suggest running a... I mean, I guess you can do this, doesn't really matter, but no barrel attachment was working very, very well for me. I didn't really want any kind of change to the bullet trajectory and my spread or anything else. It seemed just fine for me. I didn't find any kind of modification to be necessary, but I know some of you do like running suppressors to stay off the minimap and so forth. The straight bolt pull, which is extremely good for staying down or scope down sight while still having the ability to cycle your bolt. The laser sight for better hip fire. But keep in mind that I'm a little bit more aggressive with my sniper rifles, maybe just too aggressive. So I tend to stray away from attachments that are quite popular like variable scopes and range finders and bipods. I'm just not that type of sniper. So I guess I'll leave the entire attachment section of this weapon up to you despite the fact that I like running no barrel, straight bolt, bolt pull the eight times and laser sight. And that's about it. That's all that I have to say about the second assault weapon. So, if I can give you one last piece of advice, the F-2000 and the Dow are godlike. Real talk. I mean, that's the definition of how to cheese a DOM server. Like, seriously. You want to cheese an entire DOM server? Get the F-2000 or the Dow and just left-click. It's not that difficult. But other than that, I would like to thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later.